In this video, I will try to explain how you can remove certain sections of an engineered roof truss system and turn it into a cathedral roof by using conventional roof framing methods, standard practices used today. So basically what you would be doing would be removing the engineered roof truss system completely and rebuilding a conventionally framed ceiling. And uh, I've done this a couple of times with a good result, but I need to point this out. I'm only going to say it once, even though I should probably mention it over and over again throughout the video. But something like this will definitely require a structural engineer. I wouldn't do anything like this without one, uh, even myself. So just keep that in mind. Now, first thing you're going to need to do will be to figure out and cut a roof rafter. How you do that, I'm going to leave that up to you. Um, you could do it by making a couple of patterns, one for the top, one for the bottom. If you do need further clarification on that, feel free to uh, leave a comment in the comment area and I will see what I can do. You will cut a notch out of the bottom of the roof rafter and it will probably end up something like this. Most roof rafters are going to be a little larger. You're probably going to end up using 2x10s or 2x12s versus your standard 2x4 or 2x6 as the top cord of a roof truss. Uh, the top of the roof rafter will look something like this. It will get another rafter on the other side. These rafters will nail to the existing trusses. And here's a, another view of that. One rafter on each side of the truss and of course opposing each other as a, in conventional roof framing. The next picture should give you a better idea what I'm talking about. And again, I didn't do the entire roof. I wanted to give you an idea of what you were actually looking at, what you're working with. So I only did a section of the building. The last picture, I believe, shows it completely done, but I wanted to use this to give you a good idea of what we were doing. And uh, here's a very important point. Most of the rafters at the seat cuts on the lower end where it butts up against the wall will make the ceiling a little lower. So if you already have an eight foot tall ceiling, don't be surprised if you end up with seven foot six, seven foot eight, in the corner here because the rafters, the new rafters are going to be larger um, than the other, than the uh, roof trusses in most cases. The next illustration provides you with a section of the roof trusses starting to be removed. You will simply remove the roof trusses that are, or the, any part of the roof trusses that are below the new conventional um, framing so that you can actually drywall the ceiling flat. Uh, that should make sense. And these are just a few more pictures of what you're going to end up with, kind of what you're going to be doing. I threw more pictures in there, like always, to provide you with a uh, better idea, uh, just in case you're not really understanding what, what's going on here. Again, there's the existing trusses in the back and the trusses that have been cut and are now nailed to the existing rafter. Another view of it. Now, I will be providing you with another video. And uh, this one's going to be actually how to use a ridge beam to support something like this. The moment that you remove the bottom cord or the ceiling joist part that the ceiling uh, actually fastens to any drywall of the roof truss, you will be severely weakening the structure of the building. If you were just to build something like this without any additional support, you just went ahead and framed something like this. There was a good chance over time the, ra the roof, the load of the roof will put pressure on the center of the wall and actually start to bow the walls. It'll actually push the walls out and the ridge, instead of being nice and straight, will actually start to sag. It will um, start to sink in the center. 
Um, so the next video, like I said, will provide you with a solution for that. But like I said in the very beginning, something like this, even the next uh, video that I'm going to provide you with, might not work all of the time. That is why a structural engineer will need to be contacted for something like this. This is definitely something I would not attempt without understanding um, a lot, maybe maybe as an advanced uh, master carpenter kind of a thing. You know, someone like myself, I could probably tackle a project like this with a pretty good understanding of what's going to go on. But I wouldn't want the liability. You know, if a structural engineer comes up, it might be a little overbuilt, but at least you don't have to worry about it falling down one day while you and your family are in there watching TV. So off to the next video.